Looking on social media and YouTube, you come across many theories and conspiracies about why it is said that it is forbidden for flights over the Antarctic ice cap. Many of these point to there being things found there which should not be seen by the general public. Things like a German World War II base, a portal to another world, a huge deep hole leading to an hollow earth with another civilization, and of course the usual alien bases and crashed UFOs. This couldn't be further from the truth as I will explain. It is not strictly forbidden to fly over the ice, it's mainly for safety reasons, which I will come to later. The Earth, contrary to the belief of the Flat Earth Fraternity, is a sphere. Well, actually, it's an oblate spheroid, which means it's slightly flattened at the poles, and there's a bulge around the equator caused by the centrifugal force of the Earth's rotation. So you can imagine that to draw a map of the continents from a sphere to a flat surface faces problems. As you can see, when the continents are laid out flat to make them fit, they are distorted. At the equator, they are roughly at the right dimensions, but as you get to further towards the poles, the oceans between the continents are stretched, pushing the continents further apart. When you get to the poles, the ice caps are really distorted horizontally. I searched for a map that does try and put the directions right. It looks a bit odd, but it's about correct with the continent's positions. Now on to the main theme of the video. Here is a map of the Arctic ice cap. It doesn't cover any land, so floats free in the oceans. Straight away you notice there is land relatively close to the ice sheet. Clockwise from the top right you have Russia, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, Greenland and Canada. An aircraft flying over the ice is reasonably close to, to a safe landing on a continent in case of problems. And if a landing on the ice happens, rescue is reasonably close and can be reached in a few days or even hours. Dozens of commercial flights fly over some of the ice cap every day. The shortest route is between Europe and the American West Coast, and the most popular route is London Heathrow to Los Angeles, using what is called the Great Circle Route which goes over the UK, Scotland, Greenland and Canada to the American Pacific coast, a distance of roughly five and a half thousand miles or eight and three quarter thousand kilometers. Now let's look at the main interest in this video, the Antarctic ice cap. Straight away you see that there is no land close to the ice cap which actually covers a mountainous continent with miles of ice rising to many thousands of feet with mountains and valleys which contribute to the harsh weather conditions on the ice cap. On the right of the map is Australia, a long way from the ice, and on the left and closer to the ice cap, the tip of South America at Tierra del Fuego and the notorious Cape Horn. The Great Southern Ocean surges around the Antarctic ice cap with huge high waves and unpredictable currents as there is no landmass to slow down its surge except for the area around Cape Horn. It's only brave mariners who tempt the rounding of Cape Horn. The usual route from the two oceans between the Pacific and the Atlantic is through the safety of the Panama Canal. There are few flights from Australia to South America and any flights that do occur do not travel over the ice. Instead, from Australia they take the longer route across the Pacific to Santiago in Chile or to Huchangay in Argentina. The, actually, there is an airport closer to Antarctica at Punta Arenas 
But flights to Antarctica are usually flights to ferry supplies, to research stations and tourist flights. But weather conditions are so severe that right up to takeoff, flights can be cancelled because of the weather. Likewise, sailing to the ice cap is fraught with danger because of the terribly bad sea conditions in the Southern Ocean. Once there, the danger is not over because of the danger of pack ice. Early in the 20th century, the explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton led an expedition to Antarctica only to have his ship, the Endeavour, get trapped in the ice flow for 10 months before the ice won and crushed the ship, leaving the crew on the ice with their supplies and small boats. After five months on the ice, they finally dragged their boats to open water and set sail in the terrible conditions of the Southern Ocean to reach help. They first landed on Elephant Island, only to find it desolate and uninhabited, and still far from safety. So Shackleton and five of the crew set off in a whaler called the James Caird, and rowed for 16 days and covered over 800 miles, because navigating to South Georgia where they landed on the uninhabited south coast. There was a whaling station on the north coast, but in between that were mountains and ice sheets which had to be crossed before they finally reached the whaling station. Shackham did, did not forget about his crew he had left on Elephant Island, and after four failed rescue attempts because of bad weather, he finally reached the crew and got them safely to safety and not one of the crew died during this terrible experience. There is actually an account of their epic journey in a book called The Shackleton's Boat Journey. Coming back to the conspiracies of flights being banned on Antarctica, Antarctica, it's mainly safety reasons. The weather is savage on the ice, with high unpredictable winds, very low temperatures and blizzards with whiteouts making aerial navigation hazardous. Neither is there anywhere safe to land and no refueling facilities and no infrastructure and once on the ice you are very far from rescue. There is also an environmental preservation on the ice cap laid down in the Madrid Protocol of 1959 which laid down rules that every precaution to keep the area in pristine condition must be adhered to of its unique location. I do believe that all waste of any kind is removed from the ice cap and visitors must adhere to strict rules and of what they can see and do. So basically it's a dangerous place for flying, hence the conspiracies about some things that happen on the continent that is stopping the flights over the ice cap. Thank you for watching.